Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plans and if you click down this video, then you probably know what we're here for today. We are going through a list of plants that are going to be great for you if you are someone like me who is traveling all the time. Now the reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place is as I had just mentioned, I frequently am on the road, gone for you know a week plus at a time, be it for fun, be it that I'm traveling back home to the other side of the country to visit you know friends or family, or just for work. So you know, I think a really common thing that happens when I talk to people and you know they're like, oh what do you like to do for fun? I'm like, oh you know, I'm just a crazy plant lady in my free time. Um, I usually get two responses. Now the most common one of course is the people who are like, oh my god, I just kill every plant that I ever get in my house, which if you are one of those people who think that, trust me, a hundred percent there is a plant out there for you. Um, I have killed so many plants in my day and you know, unfortunately, even though it sucks to have to kill a plant, it's, you know, it's how you learn. You get better over time. So, um, you know, there's a plant out there for everyone. But the second response that seems to be the thing that I get the second most common when I tell people that I love plants is they say, oh, well, you know, I'm gone all the time. I don't have time to care for plants. I travel so much, so I just can't have them. And that was really the purpose of wanting to make this video because as someone who has a ton of plants, I will tell you that there are some plants that I could literally leave for months on end without doing anything for, and they will be absolutely fine. Now, the main criteria that we're going to use to determine if a plant is going to be okay if you, you know, are gone be it for vacation or whatever reason you might be gone out of your house and can't take care of your plant for a long time, um, the main criteria we're going to be using is can it survive without, you know, basically being watered, moved, pruned, all those things, um, you know, assuming that you have the adequate amount of light that you can give it, um, you know, basic, basic things like that. This is basically a video that is going to identify plants that if you don't have a ton of time or you're not home at all, you will be able to have these plants and they will thrive in your house. So with that said, let's get into it. So I have a lot of plants in this video today and kind of how I wanted to start by categorizing them was by putting the plants that seem the most obvious first. Starting out with the plant that I think is the most obvious choice when you're looking for something that can basically take care of itself while you are gone, and of course it's going to be the whole category of cactuses and succulents. Now I know there's going to be some Debbie Downer out there who's like, <laughs> Cactuses are so boring, like I want an exciting plant. And okay, I'm not gonna lie, I was like low-key that person for a little bit. I used to think the cactuses were totally boring and like not exciting at all. But that's why I actually wanted to pull out some of my cactuses that I think are kind of a little more interesting today for those of you who might be of that camp. So this one is my rat tail cactus. He lives out on my patio. Um, and you know, unlike a typical cactus, uh, like this beaver tail one over here, he's long. He's flowy and um, really, I think, just a unique take on cactus. So, if you like this one, um, they're super cool. Also, check out a monkey tail cactus. I don't have one, but they are honestly even cooler than this guy. Um, and then another one that I have in my collection that I think is really unique. Um, well, I mean, not that like it's like rare, but I think it's just cool if you're you know newer to plants. Are these rickrack, or I think they're sometimes called zigzag or fishbone cactuses? I have a ton of names, but um, they almost don't even look real. They're just kind of like these weird patterns, and um, you know they they don't have a ton of requirements. So um, again, cactuses, succulents, anything that falls under that category, of course, is going to typically be a great choice. Just put it in a sunny spot. Leave it, and you know most of these guys can go weeks, if not months, without uh, needing any care from you. The next plant I want to discuss is one that we are going to borrow from my desk over here, and that is, of course, the Sansevieria or snake plant, as it is commonly known. Now, I think these plants are just like the quintessential uh, low care, easy maintenance plant. Now. Um, in addition to not having super high, you know, watering requirements, I think I only water the sky like every couple weeks and um, even that sometimes might be a little bit much. You can kind of see uh, it does get a little browning if you overwater it, but um, the great thing about these guys is for some reason if you, you know, can't like leave your windows open or you don't have any lighting at all, you just want to stick it in a dark closet, these guys will literally still thrive in there. Like, they do great, they require nothing from you and they just, they 
you're just going to love back. So um, if you are interested in this plant and maybe you think that this one's not like super exciting, they come in like a million shapes, sizes, colors. So um, I couldn't recommend this plant more if you are a beginner. Trust me, this is probably the plant for you. Moving right along, <laughs> this next plant that I have here is another one that I think um, it's pretty commonly known for being an easy to care for plant that doesn't require a lot of attention and that of course is your standard ZZ plant. Now this was one of the very first plants that I had in my collection and even though it's a super standard plant, it's you know very common, very easy to come by, I'd say that this is probably the plant that when the most often people come into my house for the first time and you know they're like snooping around looking around uh, they always come to this plant they're always like oh my god this plant is so cool is it even real like what's the deal with it um so people literally love these plants and to emphasize how little care this plant actually needs um a couple months back i had been staying at this weird hotel coincidentally inside these hotel rooms they actually had live zz plants in every single one of the rooms now i have never gone to a hotel and i've seen a live plant inside there but they had these easy plants, they were doing great, they were thriving, and the rooms were like literally pitch black 90% of the time. So um, again, if you are somebody who has not a ton of light in your house, apartment, whatever, and you're going away, um, these guys don't require nearly any light, any water, and they will just absolutely thrive for you. So cheers to this easy plant. This one will always be one of my little favorite plant babies. So we will just scooch him over to the side. There's like already too many plants on this table. I can tell this is going to end in disaster. Our next plant up is um, the last one that I'll kind of consider in our common category, but that of course is the golden pothos. Now again, so many people will say that the golden pothos, oh it's boring, I don't like it, but this one is another one. Despite being a super common plant, it's one of my favorite plants in my collection. Of course you can see it is a pretty long trailer and um, I think it's a great option for somebody who maybe is looking for a low care um, requirement plant that is also, you know, going to have like a leafy foliage. For me personally, with this size plant and this size pot, I water him every about like week and a half to two weeks, so nothing crazy if you're going on like your standard uh, week-long vacation, and then this guy will absolutely be fine in your house. Um, you know, of course, how much water you need to give yours is going to vary based on things like the temperature, the humidity, the light that you have, but um, overall these guys are super, super easy to take care of. Like the last two plants that we had mentioned, they can um, survive in lower light conditions, so um, if this is the type of plant that you're looking for, something a little more leafy, a little more foliagey, I don't even think that's a word, then the golden pothos is going to be the option for you. Um, small little disclaimer, not that you couldn't, um, you know, kind of use any pothos in this situation, but I do tend to find that the golden pothos, um, it's a little easier to care for in terms of being able to neglect it compared to something like a snow queen or a marble queen or even um you guys can't see them but like actually up there i have some of the satin pothos um those all for me are a little more finicky so if you're really looking for something on the easy side then i recommend sticking with your basic golden pothos and of course the great thing is they're super cheap and super accessible to basically everyone so this is plant number who even knows anymore. <laughs> we are going to set him over here to the side and we will move right along. The next plant I want to talk about is the ginseng ficus. Now I believe this plant used to be a lot more common in like the like mid to early, late, I don't, even, I don't know, sometime in the 2000s. I feel like this plant was super popular, like super common and trendy, um, kind of like, you know, a monster or something like that is now. And they kind of fell out of favor and now I feel like they are back in force because people love the ones that are kind of like erotic looking if you know what I mean. Um, so I think that this plant is a super cool um, addition because you know of course it looks like a little miniature tree and um, it still has foliage on it so you kind of get the best of both worlds. What makes this plant such easy, um, pardon me, so easy to care for is the fact that it is going to store its water in this truck area so it can go quite a while without getting water um, for example this guy actually lives like typically over exactly where my camera is right now kind of tucked away in a hidden corner so i have a really big tendency to completely forget about this guy and even despite that he still does great has no complaints and he's just constantly putting out new growth so um, this ginseng ficus 100% if you uh, you know aren't gonna be home for a while then this guy will still do great for you the next plant I want to talk about is 
is um, kind of like a whole variety of plants, uh, or class of plants maybe I should say, which is Hoyas, but specifically this Hoya Compacta Carnosa. Hoya Carnosa Compacta. I always get them mixed up. Um, some people call it a Hindu rope, I think there's some other names that it goes by, but this tortellini little weird looking guy. Um, I think this one is super cool in particular just because of his shape, you know, he's kind of weird, kind of unique, so if you're someone like me, you like the weirdos, then this is a great plant for you, um, but they're not going to require a ton of um, water. They will require a lot of light, so, you know, if you don't really have anywhere good that you can put him while you're gone, then maybe this one isn't the one for you, but if you do have a spot that's bright light and, you know, you're just going to be gone for a while, then this is a great option, particularly for the fact that they are really slow growers. So, um, you know, if you're going to be long, gone for a long time, it might be nice that, you know, you can come back and see some new growth on this guy because, let me tell you, just waking up and seeing it every day, it's, uh, it's too exciting so um, you know on the flip side of that I guess if you're someone who's looking for a plant where you're gonna get a lot of like instant gratification this might not be the one but no matter what I think they're still really cool um, they also come in a variegated variety so if this one's a little plain for you then you can opt for that I'll put a picture of it here. The next plant on our list is going to be this rubber tree, also known as a Ficus elastica. Um, just like the very, or, um, just like the Hoya compacta, this one also comes in a variegated version as well as a ruby variegated version. So I will stick a picture of both of those over here. But um, this one is really great for somebody. I don't know where to stick my face out of. Um, it's really great for somebody who might be looking for a bigger plant that they can have in their house and isn't going to require a ton of care. So again, this one you don't have to water super often. Um, he has really thick leaves, so you know, humidity, nothing like that is gonna be an issue. Um, and they can also survive in a lower lighting condition. That's where I have mine. And I'll be honest, he probably doesn't thrive over there. I don't believe he's put out much new growth um, since I've gotten him. But on the flip side of that, if you do have a spot that you can put him that is a little brighter, they will really get big for you pretty fast. These guys are definitely super flexible. Really, whatever you want to do with them, you can do with them, and they'll basically be cool with it, which is always, uh, you know, great in my book. So this is the Ficus Elastica for those of you who might have missed it. And yeah, the next plant on my list is another one that I feel like used to be super common and kind of just, you know, fell out of popularity a little bit recently, or I don't know, maybe people just lost interest in it. But of course, that is going to be your Lucky Bamboo. Now, the great thing about these, um, unlike most of the plants that we've talked about so far, is you can actually just stick them in water and they'll just grow like that. You don't even need to put them in soil. So, um, you know, basically if you just have a large enough thing of water, it will be good until either the plant sucks it all up or it evaporates into the air. If you're looking for something that literally you have to put zero thought into, zero worry into, then I would 100% recommend getting one of these guys. Um, and I think bamboo is also like a super fast grower, however, uh, that's not the experience that I've had with this one. So I don't know what the deal is with that one. Maybe mine just is malfunctioning. I don't really know. But either way, I love this guy. I think he's super fun. Don't mind the fact that his water is a little dirty. Don't worry, I will switch out after this video. I know people are going to be like, oh, that's why he's not growing. But uh, <laughs> Lucky Bamboo, 5 out of 5, also recommend. The next plant on our list today is my little donkey tail. Now, um, I know that my donkey tail in particular grows a little weird for some reason. He kind of grows like a claw. Um, I don't really know why. I mean, actually, okay, I do know why. It's because his leaflets are like so far apart and they're not heavy enough to drag him down. But eventually, if you have like a really full one, this guy will um, kind of just like cascade over the edge of your pot. They're super pretty, super beautiful. And the great thing about these is you can literally go like months at a time without watering them. Um, this guy definitely needs a little drink right now. You'll know that they need water because the little leaflets start to get wrinkly, but as long as you have a sunny spot that you can put him in and just stick him there, basically, you know, you can be gone for months at a time and he'll just kind of be chilling there. So highly recommend. The only disclaimer I kind of have with this guy is if you're someone with, you know, kids or pets or something like that, um, they are kind of fragile if you, I like, don't even like to get near this or like, too loud around it because um, if you bump into this guy 
the little leaflets will just like fly off everywhere. So um, they are a little more on the delicate side, but aside from that, I think they're great plants and um, really love these guys. So yeah. The next plant on this list is actually going to be an entire class of plants and that is air plants. Now that is partially because um, I don't know the botanical name of like literally any air plants. They're all just like foreign languages to me. I, uh, I for some reason just can't remember them. But also because you know they're just literally all super low care. So these plants you just can place them anywhere in your house. They don't need to be in a pot. They don't need to be in anything. They kind of just thrive off of you know exactly what they sound like. Air. So um, really all you have to do is every couple weeks once they dry out, which you'll be able to tell kind of like this guy right now, um, they get really pale. And that's when you just kind of dunk them in water for a couple minutes, pull them out, and they're good to go. So um, if you're going to be gone for a couple weeks, you really don't have to worry about these guys. You just, um, you know, when you get them back, put them in some water and they'll be happy and healthy. Now if this guy is a little big, a little crazy for you, then I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it because there are so many plants over here. But kind of hidden on this lamp that I always have over here hanging is this little tiny version of an air plant. So you can put them in these little glass bulbs or you can kind of just like set them on a shelf. It's really whatever you decide to do with them. So again, super recommend these, love them. And uh, yeah, they're definitely great for beginners. The next plant that I want to talk about are my little lithops. Now, if you are a frequent flyer on this channel, you might notice that this little llama that I have them in is typically in the background. He is my lithop llama and they're just kind of right down in there. So um, I know a lot of people kind of get creeped out by these and to be honest, I kind of used to too. I thought they were a little weird. Um, some people call them living stones. I think they kind of look like brains. Some people think they look like butts. Um, a whole different variety of what you might think they look like. But uh, they come in a wide range of different shapes, sizes, colors. So um, you can really find one that you know fits your personality. And I have seen this picture, it floats around Instagram all the time when it's like this entire bowl of them and they're rainbow and they're beautiful and like it's totally like super photoshopped and oversaturated and that's not what they look like in real life. But I still want to recreate that in my house anyway. Um, so I've been on the recent hunt for acquiring more of these lithops. Um, and again, these ones are just so great if you are gone for really long periods of time. Um, when you read the care instructions for them, a lot of times it'll say that you should go like uh, literally seasons without watering them. I think it's the summer and the winter that you're not supposed to water them. So um, really, really low care requirements and just kind of really unique fun, cool plants that if you might have a lot in your collection already, um, you can kind of add these in and I guarantee you that you probably have nothing else that looks even close to them. So Lithops, another great option. The next plant that we have on this list is going to be um, any kind of variety of string of really anything, be it pearls, turtles. Right here I have a string of hearts. Um, and also hidden back here, I have a string of, I don't know if they're, they're nickels or silver dollars, string of something over here. I got this guy yesterday on sale for $10. A nursery was going out of business locally, so kind of sad for that. Um, but they were having 50% off all their plants and I snagged this guy up. Can you guys believe it? I sure can't. So <laughs> I just had to sneak this guy into the video anyway. But um, specifically, let's talk about these string of hearts. Um, I know so many people love these. These are definitely like a trendy plant at the moment. Um, and if you guys watch or follow or are familiar with, I believe he's on here as uh, the, the crazy plant guy. I, <laughs> I hope that's not like a self-proclaimed name that I'm giving him. Um, I think that's what his name is on here, but he's the one he has um, like this crazy long string of hearts and I believe it's a variegated variety. And he has a care video on them and he says it better than anyone else, which is basically that these plants thrive on neglect, which, you know, is, I couldn't say better myself. They absolutely do. They're not the type of plant who wants to be watered all the time. Um, they don't probably really love me touching them all the time. They kind of tangle themselves up. So uh, really the less that you do for these guys, the better. And uh, yeah, they kind of just, you know, string out of this pot so you can see they start out just you know flat in there and they kind of eventually spill over the edge so again kind of like the Hoya compacta um if you go away for a while you might come back and have a beautiful flowing plant that was even larger than you had before so if you think that this variety in particular is a little boring of course like i said they do come in the variegated version as well so keep your eyes peeled for those they're so pretty they're like pink and white and green 
Oh my god, I need one of those too. And last but not least is going to be our ponytail palm. Now, um, very similar to the Ginseng Ficus, well not very similar, but um, kind of similar to him. You'll see that, you know, he kind of has the, the foliage on the top and then he has this trunk on the bottom, which again, like this um, Ginseng Ficus over here is going to be where he stores his water, which is great again, because that means that you can go quite a while without having to come back and water the sky. Now, the reason that I wanted to um, add this one to the list as well, even though we already talked about the Ginseng Ficus, is because I think this guy is just, you know, a lot more tropical looking. He's gonna be able to tolerate a lot more bright lights. So um, depending on what style you're looking for in your home or, you know, just kind of what kind of lighting you have in your home, this guy or the ginseng ficus might be a better option. Those are all the plants that I have on today's list for plants that will thrive while you are out of town on vacation or, you know, just don't need a lot of care. But of course, if you had other plants that you think should have been on this list, or um, you know that I didn't mention, drop them down in the comments below because honestly, I would like to know. <laughs> I'm always looking for plants that are low care, easy to take care of, and that I can leave for a while while I'm gone. So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. If you found it entertaining or helpful or insightful, don't forget to hit that like button and of course subscribe for more videos in the future. All right guys, well thanks and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.